business champions welcome once again to my channel so today i'm going to be doing part two of taking your business from zero to millions in revenue and part two really is about the next three moves to get to millions in revenue now let me just get straight to it by the way if this is your first time watching my channel be sure to watch this video to the end because you're going to get amazing content all through the video and make sure you like subscribe and you know stay tuned now the first thing that or which is sort of like the fifth thing really started continuing from let next um, last week but first thing for today that you need to do if you want to take a business really from zero to uh millions of revenue is to find your early customers um, I think it's Kevin Kelly that called them your 1,000 true fans. These are like people who will believe in you and believe in what you're offering, even when there's not much to be seen. Literally, because these are the people that will either make or break your business. Now, I remember when we were starting our, our platform, Bruce, which is an investment platform. And I remember that uh, we were in part of a, an accelerator locally uh, in my country, Nigeria, here in Nigeria. And a couple of people sort of discouraged um, so a mentor on the accelerator, just a couple of people, let me just be sincere, <laughs> kind of said that we should be cautious about um, uh, our expectations. And he said that because, of course, he was doing uh, the COVID-19 lockdown and he said that a lot of people were very cautious about their spending, a lot of things that happened in the country and blah, and blah, and blah. But um, the truth is that we decided to find our true fans which is our early customers, which is people who are going to take a chance on us, who are the founders of the company, who are going to believe in us and who are going to invest in us because they believed in us. Okay. And the truth of matter is that those people came through for us. So we went after them, went after, you know, our former colleagues, our friend cycle, our friend circle. We just, we went around and looked for our early customers and it changed the game for our launch. It made our launch really successful. In fact, I think we made 150% of our targets during our launch. And that is because we found our early customers. We found our early, or what somebody calls true believers, the people who, was, who say, you know what, I'm going to stand by you and purchase your products or, you know, or patronize your service because I believe in you. Okay. Now, one of the things I have to say is that if you're starting a business uh, from fresh, you know, or you're trying to grow your business, to find those early customers, to find your true fans, you know, your thousand true fans, it really has to do a lot with track record and trust up in things that probably you or the people on the founding team have done in the past. So these people are really betting on the fact that, oh, you have shown consistency and we want to bet on you and give our resources to you because you have proven yourself uh, maybe in the past or whatever you've done. So um, for your business to get to do uh, millions in revenue, you have to find those first number of customers. You have to find your thousand true fans. In fact, I think Kevin Kelly says that if you find a thousand true fans, you can actually build a successful business of them. Imagine you find a thousand people right now who are buying consistently from you, you can literally build a successful business of them. So um, your focus is not just to find random people to buy your products, because I know that you want to survive, but it's to try and cultivate those people who become like return customers. Because what they do for you is what they call, they increase your LTV. What's your LTV? Your LTV is your customer lifetime value. Lifetime value. Okay, so they increase your customer lifetime value. Why? Because the more they buy from you, the more that you get in return from acquiring that one customer. Okay, so that's the import, most important thing that you need to do. And from those early customers, you're going to make the thousands of revenues and, you know, begin to scale into the millions. Now, after you've acquired those, your early customers or your thousand true fans, then you need to start thinking of growth. Okay, and growth literally comes with then looking for how am I going to fund growth? Okay, and which is the six points uh, in the several parts to take your business from zero to millions in revenue. And... Uh, growth basically uh, basically me needs funding more or less. But the good thing is, if you've done a good job finding your early customers, you use what they call traction or track record. People have seen, that, oh yeah, you have a good product, you have the right business model, you have a workable solution. You probably have the, a good team of people who are working that solution, no matter how it's big or small it is. Uh, if you didn't hear what I talk about building the right team, uh, I think you should watch last week's video. I'm going to put it somewhere here. And so you have the right team, you have the right people supporting you. And at that stage, you have proof, you've proven the concept. And when you've proven the concept, the next thing you want to begin thinking about is how do I then fund the growth? Because you've seen that there's a market, people like your products, you have a business model that's workable, and it's time to grow. 
And at that point, you need to get money to fund growth. Okay, so how do you do this? How do you get access to money? Now, there are various ways that you can access funding for your growth. The only thing, the first thing you want to ask yourself, and this is a process we're actually going through as a company right now. So this process is fresh on my mind. I'm not just talking off the top of my head. I'm talking about real things that we are dealing with in the company as we are growing. And we're thinking, okay, how do we fund growth? How do we grow this? Now, there are a couple of ways that I were exploring and I would also suggest to you. Some ways we're not exploring. One of the easiest things for a lot of business people is to go and get finance from banks or from a financial institution. That's like the literally easiest thing. And in, uh, through our Rosa platform, that's one of the things we do. We provide access to finance for micro and small businesses. So you can actually check out, check out Rosa.org and see if uh, you're a good fit for the kind of finance that we offer. But then sometimes your growth, you're growing rapidly and you need maybe larger types of financing. You can look at other financial institutions, maybe like development institutions, okay, who will give access to finance for businesses that are looking for larger amounts of money. Or you can look at commercial banks. Or, so it depends on the kind of funding you need, you need. But that's one of the, the, the go-tos that people always say. So go and get a, a loan, go and get a loan, go and get a loan. But there are different institutions for loans and there are different sizes of loans. So I'm not going to spend too much time here talking about types of loans and sizes of loans. I'm just going to say that you want to go and do your research and say, how much do you need? You know, because if you want to grow, what are you going to do with the money? Okay, how much do you need? And um, uh, how are you going to, what are you going to do with how, how, what terms do you need in terms of how long do you need the money for? Okay, because most loans, except maybe it's like development loans and things like that, are probably short term. What I mean by short term is, Average between maybe three months to 24 months and things like that. But if you want a longer term loan, maybe the development organizations are better fits than, um, how would I put it, than a, a regular commercial bank or a regular financial services company or a fintech company like we are. Now, that's the first thing. So getting a loan. The second thing is probably getting equity. Okay, equity is getting people to invest in your business. And one of the things, and that's one of the things we did earlier on, we got a few of our friends to invest in the company and get equity in the company. And it's great because they've been so supportive. Like, literally, we have great investors. They are my friends. And they are people that, off the top of my head, anytime I want to make a decision, you know, I just call them up. They are always willing. Uh, they are always supportive. There's a sense of ownership. And so it's great. So what I would say about that is if you're getting equity, it's like getting married, <laughs> acquired a new bedmate. You have to like the people you get in bed with. And that's why that's really, really important. So equity. Um, so get people to invest in your business. Find the right people who are the right uh, organizations who you pull, maybe share your similar mission. And that's one of the things that we as a company are praying about now. We're praying to find the right people, what we call mission-minded investors who kind of share our mission and know that know why we want to grow and what we want to achieve with our growth and basically what we're doing is basically fintech for inclusion we want to help underserved people get access to financial services so you want to find the right people who resonate with your vision and willing to are willing to put their strengths put their resources put their connections or their contacts to make that vision a reality and there are different ways of raising equity you can go to friends and family like we did which is really usually the beginning part of raising equity um, you can go to institutional investors so they're angel investors they are um, VCs, they are private equity companies. Uh, so they're just various spectrums of getting access to equity. And usually it's determined by your stage, basically. So there are things called pre-seed, seed, series A, series B, series C, and all sorts of things, jargons in investment world. But if you're looking to get equity, my advice to you is you need to learn all those in quote jargons because those are the jargons that are going to be spoken. And that's how we'll determine uh, how much you can raise and who's going to buy equity in your company. Yeah, okay. So equity is definitely something that if you don't mind people having share of ownership in your company and you are more focused on growing the vision and funding growth equity is something you must consider but one of the things i must say to you is that equity is not like the easiest route for us who are um, currently working through the fund fundraising thing we've learned that in fact i personally have gone through a couple of disappointments because you're like ah well i'm doing something great so i don't want to invest in us and everything but it is so getting equity is a marathon and not a sprint okay but i've learned from people who have raised equity from the right people that uh, if you find the right people, um, 
it's it, it's a, it's a value added uh, proposition to you because they become your advocates. They are championing the company and they are championing the growth of the company. Okay, uh, so that's equity. So another source of funding, which uh, I mean I've used in the past in, in my previous business, is what I call supplier credit. Okay, supplier credit. What are supplier credit? We mean that people who you work with, so you buy your raw materials with, will give you um, the, the products in on credit. And hopefully by the time you, you use your products and you sell the products or something, you can pay them back or you can pay them back in installments such that you can be growing and you don't have to pay for the growth uh, at the time that you're using the resources that they gave you. So supplier credit is a really good way that you can actually fund growth. Another fourth obvious way of funding growth is organic, literally, which is funding your growth from your revenues. And that's why as a business owner, you need to have some savings. You need to put your money aside. You need to be planning ahead. How much do I need for the next month? Where am I going to get it from? How much do I need for three months, six months, long-term projects? I, I know businesses who have funded organically. So that's something that you could consider, which is putting aside money and growing organically, using the money from the business to fund the business. Now, the thing about growing organically that I, I've got, because that's something I've done uh, several times. The thing about growing organically is that sometimes it could be slow. And if you want to grow really fast, you might wonder, oh gosh, why is it slow? But I've also heard people's stories who have grown organically and have grown, grown into millions and billions in revenue. So it is a possibility. It is possible. You can do it if you choose to go that route and you can still build a million or billions of dollars in businesses. So don't even think it's not possible. Okay. And I think something just dropped in my mind. So the fifth thing, I mean, if you're listening to this video, I hope you're you are watching to this part. So don't forget to like my video, subscribe and everything. And one of the things I have to tell you is, if you're watching my video is, I do not write any scripts. I just like, like write, write general outlines and I just talk from experience because this thing is in my head. Like I've been doing like business coaching and consulting, uh, management consulting for over 10 years. So it's in here somewhere. Like, so, but the fifth thing that drops into my mind is building a network of people to sell your products. Now, one of the reasons why network marketing is really successful is because they have people who are constantly pushing the products and bringing in more people and more people and more people. And the momentum of that means that the business is constantly generating revenues, you know. So, one of the things you can do is if you have a product that maybe is fast moving and you can incentivize people to come and sell for you, um, you might think about building a network of people, a network of salespeople who are selling your products. And the money you should be using for marketing quotes, you can be using to reward them. So that is something definitely you might want to think about doing, building a network of people um, to push your products and that can actually push growth and you can actually fund growth. You can even, if they believe in you so much, you can even ask them to pay you in advance for the products and you can use your money to create or manufacture or order the products or whatever kind of business you are doing. So those are like five ways that you can fund growth. <laughs> And so now the seventh and final thing that you might, you, might, you might consider is scaling sustainably. I say scaling sustainably because when you begin to grow, you face new challenges. The challenges you face as a small business, not the same challenge you face as a big company. Um, as a big company, the demands will be different. So you're dealing with things like human resources, uh, administration, taxes, <laughs> regulation, you know, all sorts of shows, you know. <laughs> So you've got to be prepared for it. And one way that you have to prepare for it is just being abreast of what it takes to run a successful business. Some people join associations and associations ensure that they get access to the information that they require. Some people work with consultants and the consultant tells them like what they literally need to do at the next phase of their business. So if you want to work with me, I think I have a form where you can book a complimentary call and see if uh, I'm a good fit or we're a good fit to work together. I'll put it somewhere there. And you know, so you literally have to be abreast of the stage of the business you are and what is next. You know, things like taxes, insurance, and pension, they become a reality, you know, and do, these things can make a business who is scaling really fast uh, go bust. If a government regulation just comes and say, oh, you are not, you are not doing the right thing, they can just fine you or penalize you or just, you know, all sorts of things like that. I remember a couple of years ago when the telecoms company, MTN, I think, was penalized for how many, how many billions? This six billion? I can't remember the figure, but that's it. A regulation can just come and say, oh, you did something wrong. Then I lie, spam. You know, so that's why you need to be abreast of it. You need to also begin to build your team to ensure that you have experts in these things that might become an issue as you go along. Or work with consultants. Like, literally, I don't have a lawyer on my team permanently, but I have a lawyer. I have two lawyers, actually. 
who work closely with us to look at regulations, advise us, and to ensure that we're complying and doing the right things in our company. So these things are very important. Surround yourself with the right skills, the right people, and this is going to help you scale sustainably. Make sure that you have the right structure. So for example, the right accounting systems, the right labor resource systems, um, and just things like that, as you grow, invest in systems, extremely important, because the systems and the structure are what is going to really make your scaling sustainable. I've seen some businesses scale, but they are not sustainable because the owners didn't invest in systems that will make them sustainable. So if you really want to build a business that not only will be generate millions in revenues, but will actually last and maybe probably be your legacy, okay? You need to ensure that you have the systems and the structures that will ensure that the business scales. Now, I hope this has been helpful. If this has been helpful to you, I want you to tell me in the comments below somehow how what you learned, what has resonated with you, what you're going to do differently in building your company, uh, what you're going to change. And make sure you like this video, subscribe to this channel, and share this video with a friend so that we're all going to scale together. So let's win together. Let's grow together. Let's succeed together. And, you know, I will see you again. Next week. <laughs> Take care.